Hey everybody and welcome to the new video. So if you saw the last video then you do know that I was thinking about doing a possible Xbox versus PlayStation 4 versus Nintendo Switch controller comparison. And today is that video. We're going to be grading each controller off of look, feel, durability, analog sticks, buttons, D-pad, triggers, reaction time, and features. And then after we've graded every single controller we're going to add up each of their totals in the end to see which controller in my opinion is the best. I did decide to go ahead and include the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con grip in this video. Even though I do have a Pro Controller, I just decided it is a Nintendo product, it is a part of the console, so that's why I'm going to include it. So beginning with our first category is the look. I really enjoy how the Xbox controller looks. I love the layout. I think it feels natural, especially since the, the analog sticks are spread out like this and it's not symmetrical like the PS4. I love the sleek design, I love the textured grip, and compared to the PlayStation 4 controller. I like it. I love the concept of it. I like how they have the little touch screen right here. The analog sticks are symmetrical like I was saying. I'm not a huge fan of it being like this in the layout. And then also whenever you're using your controller you have this little glowing light at the back of it and that's pretty cool. The Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, it is very similar to the Xbox One controller. The layout is pretty much identical. The analog sticks are the same as you can see. And the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con grip is pretty much the same thing as all the rest of them. Obviously though, it looks very different because it switched into this mode. So when giving them their points, I would give Xbox One the most points at 4, Nintendo Switch Pro Controller at 3 because it looks the same. PS4 comes with 2 points and the Joy-Con. Obviously, that comes in last place. Our next category is the feel of each controller. I'm a huge fan of the size of the Xbox One controller. I like how it's big compared to the PS4 controller. I do like it, but I don't know. I'm, I think it's just very skinny. It's too skinny for me. And the same goes for the Nintendo Switch. Again, even though it is switched into this mode, it is still how it's designed and obviously there's been a lot of complaints and there's a reason they had to invent the Pro Controller because they knew that people were going to be complaining about it. So I think we have the same order as last time. As for feel, Xbox One is 4, Nintendo Switch Pro is 3, PS4 is 2, and the Joy-Con is in last place once again. Transitioning into our third category, which is durability. So the Xbox controller is very good. Uh, the thick plastic is very helpful. Whereas for the PlayStation 4 controller, while it is nice, I do know some PlayStation 4 controllers. Some of my friends have had the same PS4 controller for a couple years, and over time, I felt that their controllers started to get a little creaky with the plastic. The plastic tends to wear out, and also the thumbsticks. If you've always used PlayStation, then you know that the rubber on the thumbsticks do tend to wear out and that is obviously a huge problem. The Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is very nice. I don't see like a lot of problems with it. Again, it's just like the Xbox. The plastic is a different material. It feels a little bit thinner, but again, it is more durable than the Joy-Cons, obviously. There's not really much I could say about this. I'm pretty sure you guys could already tell that the Joy-Cons are going to be coming in last, but again, I can't blame it because that's how it's designed, especially when I actually switch the Joy-Cons into my Nintendo Switch. Let me just do this real quick. As you can see, the Joy-Con can get a little bit wiggly when it's docked into the Nintendo Switch console in portable mode. And also, as you can see right here, I do have a small nick on my blue left Joy-Con. Everyone has dropped their controller at least once in their life and that is what happened to my Joy-Con after I dropped it. And that hasn't happened with any other controller. So that is what makes the Joy-Cons in last place. A side note, I really am not being biased in the Xbox One when I'm putting the grades in because that's honestly how I feel like that they need to be graded. The PS4, it's, it's just not as good as the Xbox. A fourth category brings us to analog sticks. As I mentioned before a couple times in this video, I am a huge fan of the layout of the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox, how they're like spread apart, rather than the PS4, how they're symmetrical. I just don't really like it. I feel like my thumbs are just too close together whenever I'm playing on the PS4. As for the feel of them, I think I like the Xbox the best because they have this little concaveness and then they also have these like rigid edges. Whereas for the PS4, while it does concave, the edges are very, very slippery and your thumbs could slip out very easily if you happen to be sweating. The Nintendo Switch, they are kind of the same as the Xbox, but they do feel a little jelly, like uh, especially on the Joy-Cons. They just feel, they just feel very flimsy. I feel like the rubber that they use is uh, very soft. I'm more of a fan of the big heavy duty ones like the PS4 and the Xbox. As for how smooth they are, I feel like the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is the one that glides the easiest. 
As for the Xbox One, I could feel a little grinding against the plastic and I don't really like that. And the same goes for the PS4, I feel like it just rides against the plastic. As for the Nintendo Switch, it definitely has the best feeling to it. So even though the Xbox and the Switch Pro Controller are laid out the same, I am going to have to give 4 to the Nintendo Switch, only because, like I said, it feels the best. And then we have Xbox One in third. I'm gonna give PS4 two points. Then obviously we have the Joy-Con grip in last place because it's super small and it feels like jelly. Our next category is buttons. Right off the bat, you can see that the Xbox One controllers are very clicky and I'm not a huge fan of that. I prefer them to be more quieter. Uh, even though this is still pretty audible, it's not as bad as the Xbox One. As for the Nintendo Switch, they are a little bit better. They come out a little bit more, they're more thick. Uh, that's really based on personal preference. Uh, honestly, I don't care. As for the Joy-Cons, they're very small, they're very hard to use sometimes, which again is why they invented the Pro Controller. In the end, I'm gonna have to give PS4 the most points only because it is the most quietest out of all of them. The Nintendo Switch has three points because it's not as loud as the Xbox, which is going to have two points. And then, of course, you guessed it, Joy-Con has only one point. Our sixth category, we are going to be reviewing the D-pads to the controllers. So if you've seen the Elite controller on the Xbox One, you know that you're able to press it diagonally, which is very useful for sometimes in gaming. And I really like how the D-pad is attached and they're not separate, like as you could see on the PlayStation 4 controller. Some people prefer the detachedness, but I like them when they're attached to each other, mainly because it's kind of hard to do diagonal on the D-pad when it's apart from each other. Even though the PS4 is detached from each other, I still personally like it better than the Nintendo Switch. Even though it is attached, I just... The feeling isn't the best. I much rather prefer the PlayStation D-pad over this one. I don't know, just something about it feels weird. And then the Nintendo Switch, again, this is the worst one. The buttons are little, and again, we have the detached buttons. Xbox has the most points with four. The PS4 has three points. Switch Pro has two, and Joy-Cons have one. Point. Moving on, we have our triggers. Hands down, I think Xbox One controller has the best triggers in all controllers. I just love the satisfaction of being able to press down all the way. It's very deep. Uh, I love the curve that they have to it. It feels very clean. As for the PS4, it's not as deep. And also, I think the structure to it is like a little weird. And then also how it feels, I don't really like the texture on it. I much rather prefer the smooth, solid textures on the Xbox One. And then for the Nintendo triggers, a main complaint that people have is that the triggers just don't go down at all. Especially on the Joy-Con. It's just a single button. Hitting a button down here feels the exact same as up here. I, I like to know that there's a difference between a button and a trigger and just how deep it goes, I'm a big fan of that. Xbox One has four points, PS4 has three points, Nintendo Switch has two, and the Joy-Cons have one. Next on our list we have reaction time for the controllers, so that means how fast the controller responds to the screen. Right away, I noticed that the Xbox has a very fast reaction time. There's no delay at all. I'm not sure what the specific stat is on how many milliseconds it has to respond, but I could see that Xbox is amazing with this. The PlayStation 4 controller is very good as well. I would see no difference between the Xbox One. The Nintendo Switch Pro controller is good, although sometimes when I'm playing games, I do notice a tragic delay. as well as the Joy-Con grip. There is a common issue that is widely talked about on Nintendo forums where the left Joy-Con seems to always drift by itself. I myself have this problem where it just keeps going up and no matter like if I push it down it just shoots right up the screen again and that is really a big problem when you're playing games like Breath of the Wild or Binding of Isaac, you know, stuff like that where it's really crucial that you can't be moving at certain times and that is why the Joy-Con is once again coming in last. So in the reaction time category, Xbox One has the most points with four, PS4 has three, Switch Pro has two, and Joy-Con has one point. And last but not least, we have the features of each controller. Now, right from the start, I'm going to have to give the most points to Joy-Con grip because obviously, called a Nintendo Switch and you could do so many things with it. You could have in the Joy-Con grip, you could hold it separately, or you could dock it into the actual console. This is a huge advantage that the Nintendo Switch has. It works as a home console and also you could take it anywhere you go when you're portable. Not to mention that these do not require any batteries, neither do the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller or the PlayStation 4. That automatically puts the Xbox One at a disadvantage because as you know, you need batteries for the Xbox One controller. 
The PlayStation 4 controller also has this nice little touchpad. Even though it's not really used a lot in games, it's still a nice thing to have. Nintendo products, unfortunately, do not have a headphone jack as the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 do, so it's really good when you want to use a gaming headset, but for the Nintendo Switch, you have to plug it into the actual console. But in the end, the Joy-Con grip has the most points with four because you can switch it into so many different modes, like I said. The PlayStation 4 has three points because, like I said, it has a touchpad, it has headphone jack, and also has a rechargeable battery, which also applies to the Nintendo Switch. The Pro Controller has two points only because it doesn't have as many features as the Joy-Cons, and unfortunately, the Xbox Xbox One does come out in one point because really the battery does have a major disadvantage as you guys know. So after adding up all the points, Xbox One of course came out on top with 30 points. PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch Pro surprisingly came tied at 24 points. And of course as we all expected, Joy-Con is in last place with only 12 points. So there you have it, the Xbox One controller, in my opinion, is the best out of all of them. Just about the PlayStation's like slimness, I don't like. The Nintendo Switch Pro controller, the triggers, I'm not a big fan of. The Nintendo Switch Joy-Con grip, it just doesn't feel good. I love the Xbox One, I love the controller feel, I love how it's like big in your hands. Um, the only thing, really the only thing is the battery life. I just don't like how uh, you have to buy a bunch of AA batteries which is going to amount to a lot of money because if you think of it, you're gaming for a long time. That's why I always turn off the controller whenever I'm watching Netflix on my Xbox just to save a bunch of battery life. I shouldn't be able to have to do that. I know that there are rechargeable battery packs for the Xbox, only I feel like it should just come with the controller in and of itself because each rechargeable battery pack can amount to like $20-25 and I believe that should just come with it right from the beginning. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Tell me what your favorite controller is and tell me why you like it. I like the Xbox because it is big and it fits my hand and the triggers feel amazing. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like, favorite, comment, share, and subscribe. Join the 18 today and I will see you guys in the next video. Words that I say, downtown the lights out, but we choose to stay. I don't know where this may go. These strangers know all the words at my shows. I tell she loving our style.